Today's video has been very highly anticipated, so I hope you stay till the very end because I'm teaching you how I clean shoes to get them ready to resell. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Danica. I'm a part-time reseller based in Calgary, Alberta. I sell on Poshmark US and Poshmark Canada and eBay, I guess, sometimes. And yeah, today's video is all about how I get shoes ready to resell them. Let me preface this in that I don't like spend all day cleaning shoes, okay? I try to buy shoes that are in pretty good condition and that just need minimal cleaning. I also don't stress too much about getting it perfect, okay? So let's just get that out of the way but without further ado let's clean some shoes together okay so here is me showing you all the shoes and boots that i am going to clean so here's this pair of fry boots i thrifted these forever ago and i only ended up wearing them twice and then yeah i just decided they were not for me it's a pair of vince shoes that just need like a decent cleanup these gorgeous, amazing, beautiful, vintage fry leather boots, um, just some like high riding boots, and Tory Burch brown leather riding boots as well. These had significant marks on them when I bought them, so I knew that they could be like a decent project for me to figure out, but I mean... Yeah, I was willing to try it out. Here's some Doc Martens. They are some significant scuffing. I already did one. Um, went a little hard there, but that's okay. So yeah, some overall scuffing like throughout the shoe. There is like some more damage on that one, but <laughs> whoops, showing you everything that I am using. So paper towel, some baby wipes. I like to just keep these on hand to just like, yeah, just wipe things down in general. Um, some rubber gloves because I have sensory issues. I hate having my hands wet. <laughs> some mink oil. That's basically, you can use Wonder Balsam. This is just like the no-name whatever version from Amazon. And I've had it forever. Some nail polish remover. A nail file. What else? Some cotton swabs. And. Is that it? Okay, so here I am showing you that is the damage that I did not realize was on those Doc Martens. I think that happened after I got them, so I think I did that by accident, probably threw them in a bin of shoes or something. Anyway, so what we're focusing on these shoes is the scuffing, okay? This is like the best trick ever. It is so easy to get scuffing off patent leather. Okay, so this is very, very important to remember. Patent leather is either super easy to deal with or impossible to deal with. If you notice that it has marks that look like this, that are just like black and that kind of pattern, that is scuffing and that is what we can get off with nail polish remover. Now that I'm thinking about it, I almost want to try using a pencil eraser because it kind of has that texture that it could be erased with that. I don't know if that would damage the patent leather. Now this is dyed patent leather, so it is going to be a little bit sensitive to this method. You can see on the other boot, I went a little too hard and did actually end up taking some of the paint off. So there is a spot on the other boot that is lighter than the other spots. I think that's okay. Obviously just disclose it and yeah, I wish it hadn't happened, but <laughs> it did. So what can you do? Um, it did take a decent amount of effort and, but I mean, as long as you just go gently and just keep going back and forth, it will loosen up and come off. Okay. So you see that, you see where there was some scuffing there and it's all gone and you can barely even notice anything. So I'm just going to keep plugging away at the scuffing all over the shoe. So you see, it's like kind of pilling. It's, it's, that's what I mean by, I don't know if a pencil eraser would work for this as well. I'll have to try. 
try and find another project, but for now, this is the method that I use. I'm so sorry, I was using my ring light to film this so that I could be hands-free, and yeah, like, it is cluttered, it's messy, it's not ideal, but <laughs> that was my setup that day. I wanted it to be well lit, and I wanted to have my hands free so that I could use both hands to clean the shoes. Okay, where have I gone off to? I was just like, all right, see ya, this is good enough. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I went and got pure acetone because I was like, okay, this nail polish remover is working, but it's not working fast enough and I might be able to use less pressure with acetone, which means that I could be gentler and actually just make sure that I don't really damage the shoe. So you can see there is some pink on the cotton swab, but when you look at the shoe, honestly, that time, I think that's fine. I don't think there was really any major discoloration there like there was on the other boot. So that is pretty much my method for getting scuffing off patent leather. Now again, this only works on scuffing and does not work on color transfer. Color transfer on patent leather, you cannot fix. You could maybe potentially, if you really wanted a project, you could paint the entire shoe or whatever. I've seen some people do that. but. That was not what I was trying to do. I just wanted to keep these nice and hot pink. Okay, so we're just gonna keep going here and just make sure we remove the scuffing from all of those boots. I am being very gentle. There may be like very, very slight, slight marks, but we're doing our best. Okay, so that is one pair done. And so let's see what I decide to work on. Oh, I just decided to give them like a wipe with a baby wipe to get any like loose remaining um, scuffing off because it was kind of pilling. It was hard to see what was stuck and what was just kind of chilling there. So I just took a baby wipe and wiped down the boot and just fixed any extra scuffing that I ran into. Of course, I could have gotten new laces for these boots too. The laces are not in like the best condition, but again, I'm not about perfection, okay? Like if you, I don't know. This is good enough in my opinion. And if you don't agree with that, that is totally fine. You can go as hard as you want, okay? I will not stop you. If you want to get these boots looking like they're brand spanking new, I applaud your motivation. I don't have that motivation, so I am doing the best that I can, okay? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there's just like a few stubborn spots there. Again, I don't want to damage the boot further by trying to take this damage off, you know what I mean? So, boom, one pair done. That took, let's say, five minutes. Easy, easy, easy. And let's, I could probably have sold those Doc Martens for like 30 bucks with the damage and now maybe I could do like 80, 85, okay? So we are adding value to these shoes. <sighs> these Tory Burch shoes, okay? I bought them, I thought this was paint. Can you imagine how excited I was when I realized that was just freaking dirt? If this had been paint, I would have tried very, very light hand with the nail flat. Very light hand. So it's friggin' dirt. I was like, all right, let me get my baby wipe out here, and boom, it's pretty much done. Like, I, that's crazy to me that someone donated these. And probably a lot of people passed on them in the thrift store, because they're like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. And then here I come with my little baby wipe, boom, done. Easy peasy. All right? You want to be very gentle with leather, um, getting it wet, just because... Yeah, leather doesn't like that. I would not have done that again. <laughs> Lesson learned. Again, this is all at your own risk. I am pretty like okay with taking risks on items that I thrift. If I ruin them, then, you know, if I were to try that spot again, I would have just used the nail file. Again, a very, very light hand with a nail file can get some discoloration off of some leather. I guess I called those good. <laughs> Moving on to the fry boots. These are just dirty. They don't really need anything other than just a wipe. And yes, they are leather and I'm using a baby wipe, but you know, I'm just, 
that's just what I do, okay? I just, I, I don't care enough to be like very easy and gentle on some of these items, okay? I just need to get things done. So I'm just, yeah, giving those a very good rub down with a baby wipe. I still need to get the soles of those. I went to list them the other day and I was like, oh, I didn't even clean the bottom of these. Whoops. Um, the Vince shoes. These are like fine, honestly, but the bottoms are just like could be much cleaner, you know? It leaves a lot to be desired. Um, so. I think, did I peace out again? Oh no, I went and got my gloves on and cotton swab and acetone I just decided to go in with that just to get like the sticky stuff off and then I think I decided this is gonna take me a year so is there anything faster that I can do because like honestly that would have probably worked fine okay that's like one of my go-to's acetone will clean a lot of things rubber soles definitely I tried putting it on a paper towel that was such a fail like why did I think that would work girl I should have tried like a cloth like a cotton um, cloth but I just went for the paper towel which did not work at all so I went and got myself a little a bowl of water and a magic eraser and I was like why didn't I try this in the first place like magic erasers are amazing on rubber soles okay so here I am oh, this is gonna work so well and then this magic eraser starts like disintegrating on me it must be old or something oh my gosh it like you can see it's just tearing but you can see that it is working okay so Oh, how disappointing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, what is my plan here? So I just went for it. I was like, let's just get as much done as we can. And yeah, I like, I'm not into being hard on myself for not being perfect. Okay. We are doing the best we can. I should. Um, yeah, maybe I'll go today and get more magic erasers at the store and like give these another little wipe. But I would, honestly, I would list them like this. And if you wouldn't, that is totally fine too. But for me, I, yeah, that's probably as good as that is going to get for me right now in this moment. Okay. <laughs> and then, yeah, just getting to work on the other one. There's only so much I can do with a magic eraser that is just crumbling in my hand okay so we're just gonna keep plugging away on these shoes and just doing what we can to make them look just you know presentable that magic eraser you can see it's like all over the tea towel oh this is so bad I could have also just gone in with like a toothbrush and some Dawn dish soap and water and like really scrubbed it maybe I'll do that but this is like you know shoe cleaning for when you don't feel like shoe cleaning I used to I used to love cleaning shoes and now ugh, I mean I do it but anyway moving on Here's me cleaning up that friggin' magic eraser that's all over the place. <laughs> Top left corner, you can see my always pen that I'm using to weigh down my ring light. Okay, so the mink oil is what we're gonna work with next, okay? I use this on pretty much any leather shoe or, yeah, pretty much shoes and boots that I thrift and purses, okay? It is so good. You can see that leather is just so dehydrated it is so dry when you think about it it's kind of gross to think about but leather is just skin it gets dry it gets cracked it gets it just needs moisture so that's where mink oil comes in okay this is like a natural conditioner um, it protects the leather I went into the room today yesterday to photograph these and they feel like almost waxy um, like they feel protected they would probably be waterproof at this point so I just put a 
little bit onto that sponge that it came with and just start rubbing it all over the boot just everywhere anywhere that has like that very dehydrated look i will give like a, some extra love to um, i might do like an extra layer on those parts but for the most part i'm just getting it as even as i can and kind of buffing it in I don't want there to be like an obvious layer of it. I want it to be absorbed into the leather um, pretty much completely. That is what your goal is with leather, leather conditioner. You don't want it to feel oily after. You don't want it to feel tacky. You want it to like, you know, just absorb into the boot. That toe. <laughs> I don't think these boots were conditioned once in their life. But I also kind of low-key love all the marks and scuffs on these boots. I think it does give them character. Here I am giving you a side-by-side. -side. That's what they look like before and after. So you can see there is a difference there with the conditioner on the boot. I didn't take away all of its character. It still has some of the discolorations and some of the marks. And I actually really, really love that myself. So here I am going in on the other boot. I can't, I actually can't get over how dry those toes are. What was this person doing in these boots? Do you ever wonder that? Like what life did these boots have before they got into my possession? I got these on an online auction. So who knows like when, when these were last used, um, do these fit me? I feel like I tried them on and my boyfriend had to pull them off of me because my foot was too big for them. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that is besides the point. I am just conditioning this other boot. You can see there's a white um, residue in that seam there. I think I will go in and yeah, try and get that out. Again, you don't want like to have a bunch of mink oil on there. Just a very thin, thin coat. You can always do another thin coat after if you feel like it. Um, this sponge also has seen much better days. I don't know if you can just buy that separately, but I need a new one. I probably just used too much pressure. I'm just like going in. Oh, how gorgeous is that leather? It's just like, I can't get over it. It's just such a beautiful color. And it's just like so, I don't know. I just love the story it tells. The crinkling, the wrinkles, the marks, all of it. I love and I feel like I just brought them back to life. And now they get to like tell their story, you know, I know that's like so corny, but that is how I actually really feel with these boots. The more I look at them, the more I'm just like in awe, like they should be in a movie. They should be on TV. I don't know. I don't know if you agree or disagree. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Am I insane for being obsessed with these boots? There they are. Fry size nine. They have those pull tabs on the inside. Um, I, uh, I just said that like, you know, when I tried them on, I was like, it's the end of the day. My legs are swollen and just, that's why I can't fit them, <laughs> but they're probably just too small. <laughs> and then, okay. So I thought I wasn't conditioning these. Like when I was recording the voiceover earlier, I didn't remember having done it. And then I was like, oh, I guess I just chucked these to the side, but I'm a good girl. I got these conditioned as well. Okay. These Tory Burch boots have amazing comps um so that's good for me i guess <laughs> these voiceovers are always so unhinged but i think some people like them some people maybe not but i don't know if you don't like them just listen to my videos on mute i guess there's still some good information here so i did go in with the file interesting see okay so you have to be very 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 light don't be scared okay that is just the process and then I go back in with the conditioner and you can see I like didn't take it all completely off the mark but definitely faded it a little bit so that is another little trick everything everything in this video is try at your own risk I'm not telling you you have to do these things I'm not saying this is the only way to do things I'm just showing you what I do and my like chaotic shoe cleaning system okay so that's just that on that these boots are gorgeous the leather is just beautiful 
and the logo on the top. It is not the season for these, but you know, I procrastinated cleaning these for like probably a few months. I could have had these listed in the winter. It is now very much springtime. It's like 14 degrees here today. Too bad I am stuck at the airport, <laughs> but I am, you know, hanging out with you guys in a way. So that is fine. Anyway, I don't know if these will sell in the summer, but whatever, we'll see. I had to zoom in a little bit because, oof, you got like a bird's eye view of the chaos. So here's all the shoes that I cleaned and the boots, and I just like made myself so much more money than I would have if I just left those in the condition that they were, what is going on here? That they were in when I bought them. So there's my setup. That's what I did. Let me know if there's like any other tips or tricks that you need for cleaning anything, and I will see if I can help you out. All right, that's it. Okay, so I hope you learned a few things about cleaning shoes for resale. Like I said, this is not going to make them like 100%, you know, all the way perfect, but this is good enough for me. And if you've like needed a few tips and tricks, I think this will be helpful. So if you found any information in this video helpful, make sure you give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know if you have different tips and tricks for cleaning shoes, and I'll see you next time. Bye!